Hey everybody, welcome back to Super Monkey Fighters and our What Would You Change movie podcast. I am Loki, here with Papa Nugget and Monkey Feathers. How's it going guys? Great. Great. This week we are going to go through a, I'm going to call it a classic, even though 1996 doesn't seem like it's that long ago, it really was. The movie Fargo by the Coen Brothers. Um, officially directed by Joel Cohen, but unofficially by both of them. Joel and Ethan always tend to co-direct and then one of them gets the credit. So, um, Mm. they also wrote the film. Uh, it stars William H. Macy as Jerry Lundergaard, Steve Buscemi as Carl Showalter, Peter Stormare, who I do know that guy's name, but you will recognize him as generic European villain from every movie. Other notable, uh, actors in this movie which apparently she doesn't make the top billing on the list which is strange uh francis mcdormand she plays uh marge gunderson uh john carroll lynch plays her husband norm if you don't know what fargo is which i wouldn't uh, feel bad if you don't the blurb here says uh jerry lundegaard's inept crime falls apart due to his and his henchmen's bungling and the persistent police work of the quiet pregnant marge gunderson which I guess it's actually a fairly fitting little blurb. I, I'm not going to go first this time because I didn't like that when I did that. Um, I felt I too much loved like it. I was just. I, I felt like it. I was just talking. We should do it every time. And I had two people staring at me on a <laughs> webcam. It was um, not the kind of show I want to make. So um, I'm going to start out with monkey feathers this time. <laughs> Um, first with a question, have you, had you seen this film before or was this the first time you'd seen it? This is the first time that I'd seen it. it first time you'd seen it. Okay. Yes. Um, have you seen other, or either one of you, have you seen other, um, Coen brother films? Oh, I'm, I'm sure I have. I'm sure you've probably seen I, it. I'm going to say, I, I'm sure I have. I mean, there's a, there's a very long list and they, they kind of have a, uh, they're not necessarily as shoe, ho- shoe, they're not kind of stuck to their own style the way a lot yeah. of filmmakers are. Like they, they kind I, of have I know a, I've a seen them. Wider I, range. So. I just don't. I'm not as versed as you are, where I could list them. Uh, but anyway, monkey feathers. Let's let's jump into your thoughts. What did you like about this one? So the one very very key thing that I liked about this movie was Marge and Norm's relationship. I felt it very genuine and very sweet, especially when she gets the phone call alerting her to the the three homicides yeah. where she wakes up and then Norm wakes up and he's like, no, you have to eat eggs. And she's like, yeah. but you can go back to sleep, but you have to eat eggs. Yeah. And so <laughs> then he's at the, he's at the, the <laughs> dining table and they're both just eating. And yeah. it just, it was very sweet, especially later on where he gets her lunch. And mm-hmm. so they're eating in her office just that I just was like, oh, so sweet. And See, then that ended, was that was the most unrealistic part of the film because if my wife said, "Oh, you can go back to sleep," I would have already been asleep. I would have been asleep before she finished <laughs> that sentence. So, <laughs> right, because that's just because you don't care about anything. <laughs> to be fair, I probably but, also wouldn't have woke up when the phone rang. <laughs> so she, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm terrible. <laughs> uh, but then the the final scene where he finds out that his drawing is going to be on the three cent stamp. Yeah. And he was just trying to downplay, like, oh, it's not that important. And she's like, no, it is. It's just I'm really proud cent. of you. It is. It's just the three yeah. cent. And yeah. she's and she says, but people will buy the three cent when they need to. Or I can't remember exactly when, how it's phrased. When they increase but, the price. When they increase yeah. the price, yeah. they'll oh, be she's needing just, those she's three just, cents. They're, they're just so both very supportive just, of each other. Yeah. And, yeah. and I that was something that I really did like because she's pregnant. They're happy. They love each other. And they're they they're very supportive and that was yeah. the one thing throughout the whole film that i just really liked because it helped break up the craziness of the rest of the film yeah because... and even though he was kind of a side character i felt like they did a good way of incorporating him yeah like pretty pretty well i mean even like they start out the film like showing like carved ducks and stuff but it's not until the end when like you, you don't really realize, like, I, I, still, I still don't even know yeah. what he really does, but, like, he's into ducks, and he does yeah. art with ducks. He, and He paints. And, yeah. 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 He's just there's, he's there's an this artist. Whole, and... there's, there's this entire sub-story involving him and ducks yeah. that you got to pay attention to in the background. <laughs> yes. 
I like I do like this film. I like like everything about it. So um it's it's well, hard for that. me though to look at it as on its own. I look at it more in the context of the Cohen brothers, because this is a mix of kind of some very serious subject matter and some really comedic situations. And I think when they keep those separate, I think they do better. So No Country for Old Men, focusing on fairly similar-ish kind of uh, themes, but focus much more on the serious, dramatic. You know, they they knock it out of the park on that with that. It's it's a fantastic. It's amazing. You enjoy whether when they go either more comedic or more serious kind of yeah not both weirdo and and even within this like i don't like the mix of fargo as a whole with those kinds of things because the the scenes that you're you're kind of like i don't know if this is supposed to be dark and serious so one of it's a random police officer who goes out and talks to a random guy it's one of the strangest scenes and i've remembered it since the first time i saw it because it just seems weird it's like a street that ends with a factory behind it. So it's like a neighborhood and a factory and it's kind of strange. And it's just this old guy who works at a bar and he's telling him the story about the funny looking guy who was looking for some action. Cause he was going crazy out of the lake. <laughs> and that's what the connection to the lake house, like that's where that lead comes from. But that scene is really muddled for me. Cause it's like, this is weird. And I don't know if I should think it's comedic or, dramatic or is it just an information dump like i don't know like it just feels off for some reason i I just i can't quite like to sum it up the feeling is funny looking like i don't i can't quite when i think i think that that describes this film yeah like because you have that that comedy and you have those awkward moments and then you have the complete savage murdery all yeah. melded into an interwoven narrative throughout this entire show. And so it is going to make you feel weird. Like, and you, you can't coalesce on a specific feeling for the show because you have different feelings throughout the movie. Yeah. And so when you finish, at least, and I did watch this with my wife and I know she had the thought, like, I don't know how to feel about that, that movie. And it's like, yeah, I think that's the feeling you're expected to walk away with. But when you look back at specific parts of it, that's when you remember those pieces. Yeah. That thing is, is I, the the parts that I remember, I remember all of them vividly and, and like, that's a really awesome scene. That's a really like when she walks around the side of the cabin and he's putting the, you know, into the like, that's a scene that gets burned into your memory. But when you watch it all together and you're put together, you come to the end of it and you're like, I, it's a roller I don't coaster. know if I feel bad that anybody died. Like, I don't know if I feel bad that I'm, I'm the only thing I do know is I'm glad that nothing happened to Margie and the baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, or that's the or only, Norm. Like, yeah like, like they they can live their happy life together yeah like the fact that pretty much everybody dies or gets arrested like even uh her her dad is his father-in-law like yeah i think he makes stupid decisions the entire time through and when he gets shot i'm just kind of like uh, well yeah. they kind of set him up as kind of the asshole right yeah so you kind of are be like all right yeah you're kind of an yeah, asshole, like, so. But the thing is, like, oh well. You kind of feel you, you kind of feel like I think you kind of got what you deserve, but I kind of feel bad that I yeah. feel that way. But I also don't care, and then I kind of feel bad that I don't care. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 confusing. But the comedic moments I absolutely love, like re- continually referencing Steve Buscemi's character as kind of funny looking. Like nobody can quite put a finger on it. Like they're just not a finger, know, just, not a just, finger. Just, <laughs> Just kind of, just kind of, gen- just generally kind of funny looking. Like, um, there's a scene with two barflies that slept with the guys when when Marge talked to them, and they're all like, just like, yeah, uh huh. And they're just like, those to me are really memorable, funny moments. I talked about a little bit with some of the films with the, the long opening, establishing shots. That's one of the things that stood out to me with this one that should be really boring, but I find really interesting. Is the opening scene is a desolate tundra you know, highway that's the tundra then it's a slow it's a police car driving slowly like i just i i eat that kind of stuff up like i just i could watch that <laughs> like 
you think, oh, wow, this is just a long, drawn-out shot, but I find it infinitely interesting. So I, I do really like that. I think it, the acting in this was fantastic. I think you can't fault that anywhere in the film. I mean, even down to characters that barely speak. Um, Shep, the the mechanic who sets everything up, makes all the connections between everybody. Like his character is just really quiet, doesn't say a lot, and you know answers with one or two words. And you're just like, I think that fits that character very well. So one of the dislikes is the stupid cop who pulls them over, where oh, you have a kidnapped person in your car, but I'm going to still act all calm about this. And then he gets down really close, and that's when Peter Stormare's character grabs him and shoots him in the head. And I I didn't like that because I'm just thinking, this cop's stupid. Well, Be sp- also, life lesson, if you're in the backseat of, if you've been kidnapped, you're in the backseat under a tarp, and obviously a police officer has pulled you up, just yell. Like... <laughs> you're, you're, you're your best option there. Don't just stay quiet in the back. Well, and that's that that brings me to another problem is the wife's kidnapping. She's completely stupid because well, that's, when the burglars yeah. are burglars, but, you know, the kidnappers. But when they're breaking it into her house and you have the one guy who I guess is like on the patio or the porch or whatever it is, but in the back and he's like looking through the window, she's just looking at him. She's in and shock. Just Ski staring at him. Yeah. And well, that's, that's where it's not it, until he breaks the window that she screams yeah. and then runs up to and the, thing is, it, I guess, master bathroom. Yeah, it, it, it is a dark <sighs> comedy. So you do have to give it some leeway as far as. Oh, I, that. I'm and sure. Me, that's one of my favorite scenes as well, because that's the funniest to me. I don't know why. When I saw this. You know, I, I 90s, did laugh at that point. <laughs> um, too. When when she jumps out of the shower. Oh, yeah. And has a shower curtain wrapped around her and bumps her and just like, I don't know why, but that has always been funny to me. And I laughed again, even knowing it was coming. So and and like I, it is it is kind of funny, but we we've talked about it. I can't remember for which movie, but we've talked about characters and I didn't feel an investment into William H. Macy's character and the, his wife. To yeah. then say, oh, man, it's a tragedy that she's getting kidnapped and she's going through this whole ordeal. Which, yeah, I think it's, I just, it's kind of intentional. There's no one investment. It's, it's intentional, I think, up for, on her part because you need to be detached from her a little bit. Yeah. So. But even then, it's still – watching this, I'm thinking, okay, she's just stupid. And I'd almost say, man, she deserves to get kidnapped because she's not screaming when there's a cop. She's not – running sooner from the guys who were trying to kidnap her. There's just so many stupid mistakes. There's the, when they go to the remote house or cabin and she is running around through the snow, but she still has the thing over her head and she's just running around all randomly. I, I, all right. I, <laughs> so I, to me though, that, that, that's, that's, those, those are the really humorous bits to it. And um, I get, and I understand that it's supposed to be comedic, but yeah. it's still at the same time, she got kidnapped, but I feel no, no attachment to her character besides the fact that, oh yeah, you, you're doing some funny moments here and there, but yeah. when she dies at the end, it's just like, uh, okay, and did I expect that to happen? Yeah, because Pierce Stormare's character is crazy, especially because he's setting his partner through a wood chipper. I, there's just- well, that came after. It did, I know, but her body was on the ground next to us, so I'm sure that she she was going to go in the wood chipper next. So but... I, I I just have to say one thing. Um, <laughs> okay, I I would almost argue that almost most of the characters make stupid decisions in this entire show. So yeah, but that's what makes it what it is and yeah, without it's, it's that very much a, it's a it very much a comedy work. of errors we've yeah. already established though that i read yeah. too much into things especially with national lampoon where i was critiquing it <laughs> a lot harder because i'm expecting a more realistic film yeah. and not the slapstick comedy that it was but yeah people make stupid mistakes but well, the wife was very prominent in her mistakes yeah, at least yeah. from what i was able to yeah, and also kind of with that to kind of bridge this that we maybe should have brought up at the beginning. Um, this movie opens with a based on a true story. 
And it absolutely isn't. It's 100% made up. Like, um, and I even think at that's the time a idea. When, they, when they were asked about that, um, the Cohen, well, I can't remember which one of them said it, but they were just like, yeah, we just wanted to see like if people would believe that kind of a thing. Like you can pretty much <laughs> say anything is that. And so, you know, it was just a, a weird thing to do at the time. I, 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 it's an interesting choice, but I think they were trying to build that up to be more of like a, unsolved mysteries kind of a movie, but it's really just a comedy of errors of just, these are a bunch of bumbling, bumbling people who, because even Marge, like she kind of just bumbles her way through things and all of the other cops are just like, Oh yeah, that's, that does make sense. And well, you know, yes, it is a comedy of errors. Everyone makes mistakes and that's what makes the movie what it is. I would argue that there are a lot of, criminals or criminal activity out there that are probably as smart as the people portrayed in this film oh, yeah. and they get caught. And I believe that I think it's a disservice to even say that Marge's character was not kicked competent or capable at her job um, uh, yeah I, 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 I i'm not trying to say that she's not conf- competent or capable yeah yeah you know, she's but she's kind of just shows, stumbling into a lot of things as no well. she's not stumbling into things she's systematically piecing things together in which she needs to do as a detective yeah and that's that's where she's she's a, a, a step up above the other police officers where She's looking at things and, and, and figuring them out and they're looking at things in the wrong way. So the scene She's with her analyzing and the, her partner it and where piecing it together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where the partner is okay, it had a DLR. He, he wrote DLR, the dead cop wrote DLR as for the license plate. So he's looking for he's pieced together a scenario that's not at all what happened. That he was writing down the plate and that's when they 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 killed him. Right. And so he's looking for every, he, he's out on APB for any plate that has DLR. And she's like, are you sure about that? And not, it's just a dealer plate. Like it's a new car and it, you know, didn't actually have the plates. Like she is the smart figuring things out, but she does. Well, she's also the chief of police, which infers that she has yeah, experience. She's, she's capable, but she does kind of stumble into some things. Like she doesn't necessarily suspect Jerry sure. until he runs. Right. She doesn't like she's following up every lead because she knows that's good police work. That's why she's out by the lake when she finds him. Right. It's it's not because she had some great epiphany that this is what it's going to be like. Yep. She 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 pieced it all together because she is she is a competent, capable um, police officer because she's doing her job. She's doing her job. She's she's, she's covering the bases and making sure it's a rocket scientist to foil these bumbling criminals. Yeah. Yeah. These guys aren't smart by any stretch of the means. Um because even then, Jerry sets up the whole thing to have his wife kidnapped before his rich father-in-law's even said no to the deal he's yeah, trying to make. Yeah, that was <laughs> so. He comes home from that, and his and his and his his father-in-law's like the next morning is like, yeah, let's look into that. And he's like, oh crap, I need to stop this thing from happening. Like, you know, but um, that just plays into how yeah, and that's how yeah his mindset and yeah and. With the bumbling is very much the criminals the entire time. Um, they are, they do nothing but stupid things the entire time they get them caught. And I think that's what lends it to that based on the true story myth is this very much does feel like this is really something that idiots would do. Like this does feel like a, a unsolved mysteries case where, you know, yeah, somebody's trying to commit fraud at the car dealership he works at. And so he's writing fake serial numbers down, even as the guy's calling him saying, I can't read these serial numbers. And if you don't give them to me, I'm going to, we're going to call the loan back in. So he's still trying to fake the serial numbers and make them, you know, illegible kind of a thing. It's like, no, they, they, they know you're committing fraud. Like <laughs> stop just being an idiot. So, which does also like one of my favorite scenes and has always been this way is when they, the police do actually finally apprehend Jerry and he's in a motel and he, you know, they knock on the door and he's just politely trying to be like, Oh yeah, just a minute. And then he's trying to jump out the back window uh-huh. when they actually get him and the way he fights and like squeals and screams like a kid, <laughs> like that fit his character so perfectly as that whole, like up until that moment, he totally thought whatever he did, he could get away with it. Like that he could just, 
solve whatever problem was there with just doing something, but that's not the case. And so I just, yeah, I, I, I've always really liked that. So. Yeah. And I, th I think it speaks to how in touch with reality he is, um, and which he thinks, Oh, I'll just do this thing and it will make my problems go away. Yeah. And he doesn't understand like the weight of his actions or yeah, which, which or, or he thinks to me is a comedic contrast to the whole, uh, culture culture. They're trying to portray, um, which I thought they did a really good draw job at hammering in kind of the culture in that region, whether it's true or not. I'm not the person to comment. <laughs> I'm only speaking on what I saw in the film. Um, but most of the interactions that everyone had was it'd be like, Oh, how are you doing? And it'd be like, Oh, yeah. good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. How are you doing? Like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. You know, there, um, there was no depth to, to characters communicating, especially with Marge and the weird friend from school and yeah. What like, the weird stalker friend? Yeah. Was. I'm not sure that's, if that needed to be there, but that's something that, I would, that's the thing that I would change because that scene itself was awkward, but it didn't actually provide anything useful. It didn't go anywhere. It just was. And I, it just was very, it just was very awkward. And that's the one thing that I know that I would change because it just was there. No explanation. He was acting really creepy towards her and. Then he was lying about the, the situation with his wife. Yeah. And. That he didn't have. Yeah. I yeah. just. I That would be something that I would remove because yeah. it just. It served no purpose to the film other than just being there. I think. I think it's in. Its purpose was to be weird and awkward. So the situation with Mike, I know that I would change. But also with the wife, I would actually. I would provide some type of investment to her character. Like, why should I care that she's being kidnapped besides she's just getting kidnapped? And whether or not it's just for a comedic effect. By the end of the movie, when she dies, I don't care. I mean, it sucks. It's tragic. And in the real world, of course, I would care. But with this, it's just, oh, okay. She died because the... Crazy Peter Stormare. I don't. I wish I. I don't remember his character's name, but Generic he just wanted to shut her up. Eastern European name. Yeah. By that moment, it, it's like I don't care that she died because there was no investment. Yeah. She was yeah. there for some comedic moments, but I don't care. Well, I, I think that's 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 an intentional thing. Is I don't think you're. I don't think she's. You're supposed to see her the same way that Jerry sees her. Yeah. Like she's that's horrible though I, and, yeah. I, and i i i know yeah. i know i know that's, i know yeah. i just yeah. well, you know, this is not a, you're supposed to a, yeah. a horrible film in some you, regards you, <laughs> yeah. you mean it's not a feel good it's not yeah. a feel good movie yeah. that at this the end of a it family you're like, flick man i feel i feel so great yeah. everything the, the, is just the so only happy. character you should probably identify with is uh Marge. margie or her <laughs> husband <laughs> Yeah. If you identify with anyone else, please seek help. <laughs> seek a lot of help. Yeah. The, the thing that I would absolutely change is when Steve Buscemi gets the money and opens up the briefcase after he's murdered someone and that shot in the face, sees that it's a million dollars. His idea is I'm going to go hide it. Yeah. Take out $80,000, give that to my partner and then leave. It's like, no, you would just disappear. Like yeah. he wouldn't try and work out some, you know, oh, I'm going to con him and then I'm going to go back later and figure out where on the side of the road with my random windshield scraper this is like, yeah. And again, that, that, that goes into that bumbling idiot, mm -hmm. but yeah. But if I, he, but if he, if he wised up, then would that yeah. break the film? Yeah. If he was smart enough to just disappear, mm -hmm. I've got the car, I've got the money. Uh, <laughs> I'm gone. I'm, you know, and I, I think that's more of just, that's a, that's a situation that I actually put myself into where I was just like, yeah, no, that would be the smart thing to do. But th th that's not the point of the movie. The point of the movie is they're idiots yeah. and they, they make <laughs> stupid mistakes. And he ends up not only getting beat with a belt 
because because of his idiocy, he gets put through a wood chipper. So um, I do think it all makes for a really good film. Um, I, I recommend there's some Coen Brothers films I would say you could maybe skip. Um, maybe, but they're all going to be entertaining. You know, it seems like some of them may have come and gone. Some of them as they've gotten older that, that people um, might not remember, but I do, I, I do like this film. I do recommend it. The one thing I didn't feel like I really knew initially was like, what, what was Jerry's entire motivation for doing this? Was it just to get I think the it was money? To repay back a loan. Was it to repay back? Out, I thought it was that he needed the money to repay back the loan that he took out. Yeah, they don't really go into like, t- a ton of detail on that. Like they they allude they to the fact that he's things. committed some kind of a fraud with with the dealership. He's got a loan on some inventory that doesn't exist. But I wasn't sure if like was that from did that they, happen beforehand and that's why he's doing what he's doing or did yeah. he do that to try and get money to do the thing with his investment that he found or like, I feel like there's a few things moving around, but I never know why. And so I don't feel like I understand his exact motivation for carrying this out. Yeah. I don't think they really go into detail on that too much. Like they alluded to the fact that there's he's it's 300 and something thousand dollars. I think that he's got a loan for, and there's a few cars that, don't quite exist with <laughs> yeah or you know it's it's potentially that he's been doing like because you know what he gave one of them to the, the yeah you know, he's, he's doing something else that's criminal like right and so that's where I, that's where the chicken that, chicken so. and the egg thing comes into my mind yeah it's like did yeah. that happen but then he has the car but he gave it to the yeah. criminals so well and that's yeah no i don't i don't think that car is necessarily part of it so I think that's why he's looking for the million is because it's like seven hundred thousand for the parking lot that he wants to build, and then the three hundred thousand ish to cover the the mess that he's in with with the financing. Okay. So, yeah. But so I that's, think that's, that's I think that's it. the only piece that kind of threw me for a loop that I didn't really understand where the entire movie started or the, the reasoning yeah. for it. Yeah, they don't go into a ton of. Like, I think he even kind of talks about that at the beginning where he's like, well, my, my, my problems are my own kind of a thing yeah. in that opening scene. Like, and that's just kind of where they leave it. Like they mm-hmm. don't, they don't Elaborate. delve into, yeah, they don't delve into that. They just, you know, move forward with everything. So, yeah. So then is that what you would change? I think I spent too much mental energy on trying to figure that out through the entire movie that it would have been, my mental energy could have been used at better places in the movie than trying to figure that out. Yeah. And I can see how that would have taken you out. Cause for me, I just like, okay, he's committed some kind of a fraud. He's in a bind. He needs to, you know, he's desperate. He's a desperate criminal and desperate, yeah. you know, doing desperate things. But so I want to know why he's desperate. Yeah. Why is he desperate? <laughs> or just say he's desperate. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, maybe I just got wrapped up in the, the allure of the, the uh, accents and the yeah. friendliness that I just, yeah, so that's that was probably the biggest thing that just kind of took me out of it a little bit, or like I said, I was getting a little too wrapped around the axle on. Um, but outside of that, um, it was a very, very good movie. Well, I think that's a perfect place to wrap up our podcast, unless anybody else wants to add add anything else to it. Um, anyway, let us know what you think about Fargo. Um, I don't think any of us have watched the TV show that came out of it, which I think the first season kind of follows the story. And then it's every season, something new. Um, at least I know that the current season is like 1940s mob fights, something like that. Anyway, um, let us know if we should watch that. Cause it's probably amazing. Um, tell us your favorite Coen brothers movie um, and explain why it is a serious man. Um, <laughs> not to say that that's my favorite. Um, Anyway, we'll uh, sign off there. Leave some comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And we'll catch you in the next one. Adios. See ya.